While we now have three different vaccines available, doctors and scientists continue to research other medications to fight this virus. They're focused on helping those who get it early on to keep them out of the hospital. One medication being studied treats parasite infections. And our Deshaun Brown found out a local doctor is being swamped with requests for it, even though it has not yet been approved by the FDA. And the majority of these requests are from those who are not vaccinated. And I'm getting 50 to 60 requests a day from people anywhere from 22 years old up to 80 years old. The last few weeks, Dr. Will Connor has noticed a trend. There's been one prescription request after another from patients who decided not to get the vaccine and instead are requesting preventative medicine, not yet approved. This is a drug, ivermectin, that has not received the controlled clinical trials that are necessary to to validate the medication and for it to do what people think that it's doing. Now they're coming on these different telemedicine apps thinking that doctors will um, unscrupulously prescribe this medication, which is not proven. Back in March, the FDA released a fact sheet explaining why someone should not take ivermectin to treat COVID. Among the reasons the FDA says it hasn't reviewed data yet to verify it's safe but acknowledged there are studies underway. The FDA says even approved uses can interact with other medications, and it is possible to overdose. This is the goal for Active 6, is really to try to understand which drugs actually can prevent people from worsening uh, their COVID condition or uh, developing worsening symptoms. The Duke Clinical Research Institute is leading its own nationwide study now called Active 6. The focus on three medications, all approved for other uses to find out which, if any, can effectively treat mild to moderate COVID cases. Dr. Adrian Hernandez is vice dean in the Duke School of Medicine. And the clinical guidelines do not currently recommend ivermectin uh, for uh, care of COVID-19 directly because we don't have those answers yet. Our recommendations and, and those of others is to only evaluate it or use it in the setting of a clinical trial like Active 6. Among the medications in this study is ivermectin, used to treat parasitic infections, fluvoxamine, often prescribed for depression, and fluticasone, a steroid often used to treat asthma. There are two issues that we're trying to address. One is sometimes those uh, therapies may be too late and so uh, tackling the disease early is important. The second thing is that they may be hard to administrate. Uh, some require IV infusions, and so that's not necessarily a convenient uh, treatment uh, for people who have mild to moderate COVID-19. You know, I would love for there to be a safe, effective outpatient treatment, and as a primary care doctor, we would like nothing but that. Dr. Connor says an approved treatment could benefit everyone after it's been proven safe. My main concern is that people are very frustrated that there is not an outpatient treatment for this. So they are seeking out treatments that are also not FDA approved to give them the comfort that they may be doing something to prevent COVID, which is doing nothing to prevent the spread of COVID. And that's what happens when we get herd immunity by vaccination, we prevent the spread of COVID. And I do want to stress in that clinical trial being conducted at Duke University, these medications are being used on people who currently have COVID, either mild or moderate cases, but it is not being tested as a means to prevent the virus. And doctors warn that using any of these medications without the surveillance of a doctor could be very dangerous. Erica. Yeah, a lot to consider. Deshaun, thank you.